Hey, Cock 45 here, and you probably know I have high standards. <laughs> Watermelon! <laughs> Any more? No, it's empty. Yes, it is a high standard. I do have a high standard in my hands, and uh, it's called the Riot 18-7 uh, <laughs> shotgun. So if we have any riots break out, we're in good shape, right, while we're doing the video. This is one that you uh, might have seen in the Sunday shoot-around several weeks back. I was lucky enough to walk up on it in a gun shop, Guns and Leather, over in Greenbrier, Tennessee. And uh, it kind of had my eye out for one of these for a long time. Because, guess what? I think, you know, I'm so dense, I, I can't say with 100% certainty. But I think it was my first shotgun like this, this one or else the Winchester 12, yeah, Model 1200, uh, back in like 1973, okay? Because I own both of them, I bought them both about the same time. I think it was this one, I don't know, can't, can't say for sure. But I liked it a lot, and uh, I liked the Winchester a lot. And at the time, I probably didn't know as much about the quality or the guns, uh, and I... I sold this one or traded it off um, and maybe this was higher quality than the Winchester 1200 at the time and, you know, as far as the vintage models that year I don't know because these have a really good reputation the high standard so uh, we're going to shoot it talk about a little bit the history of this gun uh, you know the uh, K1200 interesting interesting shotgun and a good reputation you know for what it was <laughs> so we're going to take some shots and uh, give a little history of this. And it, they came out in, as I understand, 1966, the K-1200, okay, the shotgun. And there were different varieties of it. There were longer barreled shotguns, you know, uh, less capacity. This one is the 18-7, which I think means 18-inch barrel, and then seven round capacity, which six plus one is what I get. So. Duh, my Kentucky math and background tells me seven, that's seven. So that's what the magazine holds. You know, sometimes if, uh, depending on the shells, the length of them, how they're crimped and all that, you'll have a firearm that will hold maybe five, but then other uh, types of shells, it'll you can cram in that sixth one and you know, vice versa. But it seems to hold six plus one. Uh, these were popular police shotguns. In fact, this one, I think they told me it was, uh, it was it was a uh, police trade-in. It has this little thing here, but I don't know if it had a engraving on it, some department owned it or what. But very popular, kind of like the uh, Ithaca, the Model 37s, you know, the Model 12s, and all those. And for a combat or a police shotgun or whatever, uh, they they probably worked out better than for a hunting shotgun because one of the things that led to their demise was the fact that the barrel was not replaceable. You know, like, unlike the Winchester, I guess, the uh, Ithaca, Remington, and so many of the other shotguns, Mossberg, you just can pull the barrel out and put a different barrel in, a longer barrel but more or shorter, but more importantly, one with a different choke. Because back in the old days, you didn't really have the screw-in chokes. Now you can buy a shotgun. You hunters know more about this than I do, but I don't know, a shotgun with a, what, 21 or 22-inch barrel, you can do almost anything with it. All right, just based on, uh, you know, have a handful of different choke, choke tubes you can, you can screw in. Uh, but, but back in the day, you just had to have extra barrels. You had to change out the barrel. And couldn't do that with this one. Okay, so that was what really led to the demise, as well as to the demise of the Remington Model 31, as I understand, which is what this one was based on. The patents had run out on the Remington Model 31 and uh, high standard basically just copied the model 31 action and everything and it was the same way so those two don't exist anymore uh, partly for that reason maybe mostly you know for that reason okay um, but uh, from my reading on this thing and I, again i didn't know this when i bought one i think i had seen the movie i might have talked about this before the movie the getaway with uh, steve mcqueen ali mcgraw you probably have seen it if you're <laughs> it's a good shooters movie it's just a, a good movie old movie kind of movie they probably couldn't make today wouldn't be politically correct at all in so many ways but uh, a, a great great movie in a lot of ways 
and uh, Steve McQueen, as I understand, that's what he had, high standard. I think it was probably this model, or one very similar. The, there are different models of this model, the K1200. There was a deluxe and a simple one, or, or standard. This one's a standard. Uh, I think one model had, and I don't know if his did in the movie or not, had uh, rifle sights on it. Might have had a, a bigger sight or some sort back here, and then more of a rifle sight up there. I don't, don't know, but... Uh, uh, but basically the, the same gun. And this one, I, you know, I plead guilty. One of the things that led me to want one of these was, wow, that looks like fun, shooting up cars with a double lot buck from a short barrel shotgun, pump shotgun. And that's kind of what I did. I went out to, a, we call it a dump back in those days, and where old cars and old appliances had been thrown out, and uh, I shot them up with something like this, and a 44 Magnum and 357 Magnum and whatever I wanted, black powder rifle. So. Anyway, uh, that's how I got interested in these, uh, even though I didn't hunt. You know, I didn't need a police shotgun, but it's a great defense shotgun, defensive firearm, isn't it? It's hard to beat, that configuration, right? And uh, it, it's just well made. One of the reasons I brought the Mossberg out is, you know, I like the 590, but the Mossberg 500, 590, whatever, they kind of copied the action on this. You know, so it's basically the same action and uh in, in most ways except they used alloy on it and of course with the moss you can pull the barrels out and everything easier but uh yep not on this one but still a very well made shotgun and i don't know if i've never i don't know if i've ever held a remington 31 model 31 you might have a share but it was supposed to be a just great shotgun too you know well made you know like this one but uh, did not have that flexibility of interchangeable barrels. Let's throw some slugs in and see if it will shoot a slug. Okay, I'll uh, put the safety on. We'll load up six plus one. How many is that, Kentucky? Let's see, two, three, four, five, six. Let's see if I'm telling the truth. Oh, yeah, it almost holds seven if they were a little shorter. So six plus one. But that's good. I like to have a little little room there. All right. Uh, why don't we go over there and just play a little bit on the gong and maybe the big game over there. All right. Safety off. I think this one hits pretty much right on. It's just a matter of holding it there. Well, you got to a bead front sight, of course. Let's try the gong first. Oh, I like that sound. Let's try the uh, buffalo. Oh boy, how about that ram? <laughs> we have one more. How about the other buffalo over there that never wants to fall? Uh, I think I either missed or hit it low. I don't know. <laughs> like I said, it never wants to fall. Even when you don't hit it, it won't fall. What's wrong with it? So, you know, if you're like, well, hopefully you're not like me, right? You're a human. But if you're like me in terms of your taste in, in firearms, uh, these old, these vintage shotguns are just special, aren't they? There's nothing uh, special in terms of the condition of it. It's been beat around a lot. But that old wood, corn cob, uh, foreign, it's just neat. It really is. I mean, look at the character and the, the personality. And I, I love the 590, you know, A1, as you know, 500. But, you know, the difference, uh, there's just something really cool about these. You know, they're, they're both just functional tools and uh, they, they both just work very well. And you can see that this 18 inch barrel, this is a 590A1, mine I've had a long time. The barrel's you know, shorter. When you have an 18 inch barrel, guess what? That's shorter than 20 inches or 21. Uh, and uh, that I like a 20 or an 18 inch barrel on one of these types of shotguns. It's, it's just nice. So you wouldn't think a couple inches would make that much difference, but it's pretty neat. All right, let's shoot some. Uh, what should we shoot? Uh, the, what we got out here to blast? Let's try a little double lot buck. You want? Yeah, let's do. We've got four bucks. Let's just shoot that. Okay. How's that? Yeah, let's make sure we get the. Uh, yeah, those two slugs are lying there. You have to watch that with shotguns and shells or anything. You know, you know what you're shooting. Uh, the biggest danger would be uh, 
you're going to tear up whatever you hit, right? With a double lot buck or, or a slug, but the slug's going to penetrate more and go further. The thing I most am concerned about would be uh, if I think I'm loading all slugs and I put bird shot in and I start knocking off bowling pins, you don't want to hit a bowling pin with uh, even double lot buck. It, uh, this is number four, I think, but it could come back at you. Right. Bowling pins are tough, if I haven't told you that. All right, so we have some flexibility here. Let's uh, let's try out that. Let's let's smoke some pot. <laughs> oh man, yeah, nice. <laughs> we probably soaked the target. Let's put one in the middle of that target. Woo! Number four, got one left. Didn't want to get out. Uh, let's test a group on old Mr. Cowboy down there. Number four, Buck. I'll hold right in the middle of him, pretty much. Ooh, that would put the herd on, that desperado, wouldn't it? That's some mean, mean stuff. Plus, you see the way it rocked him. And, I mean, there's a little bit of distance there, too. So, uh, anyway, a shotgun is a powerful uh, piece of wood and steel or polymer and steel. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. Can I, do I have time to shoot a couple of, uh, you yeah, know, just some more bird shot real quick? You don't want too big a hurry, are you? It's going to get dark on us here. I'll put the safety on and load up a few of these. Because, you know what, I don't think I shot that uh, garbage can enough. I have a thing about metal garbage cans. Uh, a lot of people think they're designed for, you know, garbage. They used to be, but these days they're mainly uh, their main purpose is uh, as a target, right? A lead receiver. So let's pop the safety off and. <laughs> Do I have any more? No. Okay. I think I was not. I was not manhandling it you know, enough there getting that round out. I believe that's what it was. So let's, uh, you know me, I love slugs. And we've got a few more. Uh, let's put those in there. We won't be too extravagant, but we got, we got to shoot a few slugs. And I know we're in the ammo apocalypse uh, right now, but uh, let's put a few of those in there. Uh, five. Let's put them in the magazine. This thing loads like butter, too. Just go in so so nicely. Okay, five. That will allow us to take a couple of two liters or one. Let's see. Uh, yeah, let's save one. Let's shoot that uh, one on the left. Ah oh, no. <laughs> Wasted a slug, just threw it into the air. How about the gong one more time? <laughs> and how about a couple of bowling pins? Well, we got two left. Let's pop that one right there. Oh man, sent him down range, didn't it? <laughs> Sends him to the holler. Holler. Oh yeah. So uh, we'll shoot one more round of double lot and to let you go. I don't think I had shot any of, yeah, this. Okay, this, this came out of the black box there. The, the Federal Black Pack, uh, nine pellets, double lot buck. All right. Yeah, the, that, that particular brand, they've not had that out too long, I don't think. Safety on, close him up. We'll put his maze we can get in. So six plus one. Woo! Barrel's getting warm. Three. Four. Didn't feel right. Five, yeah, okay. Six. All right. Double lot buck. Nothing like a little torture. Okay. So we got a bowl or a two liter that needs to be popped. <laughs> uh, I'm going to shoot the gong, see if we hear any pellets hit it. Uh, 
I hear a little ring. I don't know if y'all hear that or not. I'm gonna shoot at the barrel over there. I heard that hit. I'm gonna shoot at that swinging plate. <laughs> it got there. Let's shoot the tombstone here, see what kind of group we get. Oh man, that would ruin your day. Let's put another one on that. Woo. Powerful. And let's finish up with Mr. Cowboy. <laughs> Just in case he hadn't been abused enough. Oh uh, yeah, double odd buck is nasty stuff, I tell you. Uh, and again, from the scene in the movie, The Getaway, if you've not seen that, you know, uh, Steve McQueen shoots up these police cars. And I don't, maybe it's because it's one of the early movies that uh, the special effects there, I mean, it's dramatized, you know, the hood flies up and maybe it catches fire and maybe it's realistic, I don't know. But as far as the hits on the, the side of the car or on the, on the hood or whatever and it looks like they're really shooting the cars as i recall uh you know with double odd buck you know unlike some movies and tv series like the a-team you remember that one if you ever saw any of those you're old enough to have seen some of those they'd be shooting with a full auto 556 or something at the car and it's just making sparks on the side of the car no holes you know that sort of thing but in that movie the getaway it, it, there was a lot of realistic gunfire it seemed to me but uh anyway the old K-1200, uh, you know, and uh, again, this is a standard model, 18-7. Uh, uh, some of you have these in various configurations. They got to being made by subcontractors, I understand, after a few years. Uh, from what I read, I wasn't sure whether it was mostly the hunting models or just all of them. And uh, some of the quality control went down. Uh, their high standards, you know, dropped, I guess and uh in later years and uh that caught a lot of uh, flack over that from you know because they were made by other people and not doing as good a job as what i'd read and then again for the reasons i mentioned uh, that and then uh, the lack of flexibility on the barrel you know uh, interchangeability and stuff that just pretty much uh you know put them underground on the other side of the grass and uh too bad really nice really nice shotgun i like it and i'm i have a special feeling for it because it is one of my if not my very first shotgun like this and uh, i used to have a lot of fun with it i don't know why i trade you off i'm just not very smart let that thing get away just let that thing get away so uh i got one now and i was glad to just run across it and uh i don't plan to let this one get away you know so the old uh, high standard K100, and again, it, it is a riot shotgun. I don't know if you can see that, it's unloaded, but you know, on the, <laughs> that's what's funny about it, on the barrel, you know, I don't know if you get the focus on that, but it says, you know, riot, 18-7, it is a riot shotgun. Is that funny? Yeah. So, uh, you know, as we all know, uh, those of us who are fairly, fairly gun savvy that uh, you know shotgun is a is quite a howitzer right and uh, they're a lot of fun anyway i'll let you go i've rambled a little too much but you know when i get a shotgun in my hands with some ammo i, I just uh, i just have a lot of fun and i know you do too life is good well fire it's a long walk from where i had to shoot that Oh man. Oh hey, didn't see you guys there. Since you're here, I want to let you know about our friends over at Talon Grips and Ballastall. TalonGunGrips.com. Check out everything they have over there. You can get lots of different grips, the stick on grip textures for your handguns and rifle grips. So go check them out. Also, Ballastall, they're a firearms lubricant or anything else you might need lubricating. Uh, it's water soluble and non toxic. Been using it on the compound and cleaning all of our guns. It's a cleaner and a lube for over 10 years. So Ballastall, Talon Grips, definitely check both of those companies out. And also, while you're on the internet, don't forget to go to Hickok45.com. You can also find us on Facebook, Hickok45, Twitter, Hickok45, Instagram, The Real Hickok45. And also, I have an Instagram page where I post behind the scenes stuff and different things like that. John, J-O-H-N underscore H-I-C-K-O-K-4-5 on Instagram. And uh, the next thing you have to do is watch more videos.